Hi, this is Joanne from Magpie's Cottage. Today I'm going to show you how I make my socks from a sock tube. This is a pair of socks that I made uh, recently from a sock tube. The tube consisted of just this orange variegated and I added on this charcoal cuffs, heels, and toes. Um, I did an afterthought cut in heel, two by two ribbing, and a rounded toe. So you can see, uh, this is how my finished product will look. I had a pin here, cause while I'm doing the toe, I usually like to mark the side I start on so that I make sure I stay uh, even front and back. I start from a long tube. This is a half tube that I have here. And what I do first is I determine the length I want um, my tube to be cut at. And uh, to determine that, you take how long you want it to be on your leg plus how long you want it to be on your foot and subtract five and a half inches. So my foot is about nine and a half inches and I like a five inch leg. So if you add that up, then you are left with nine inches. The nine and a half plus five minus five and a half. So you have nine inches. So um, this, I don't think I have nine inches. Oh yeah, sure I do. Okay, but this one, since it's so small anyway, I'll just cut it exactly in half. I'm okay if it's just a little bit taller than what I wanted. Um, so I got 19 and a half here. So I will cut it at nine and three quarters. So I'll measure that down. Nine and three quarters is about there. And I will put a needle in right there. Now you can use waste yarn or you can use uh, another set of needles. I like to use extra needles, double points, uh, circulars, whatever I have around, because it just holds it better. The waist yarn kind of sinks in. You can see that like here. It, it just sinks in, it's not as nice. So um, I am gonna go across and pick up the right leg of each stitch all the way around. You can see I'm doing that here. And you have to make sure you're staying in the same row all the way around. Now, when you get to the end, you, you will be one row off, of course, because really when you're knitting in the round, you're knitting in a spiral. You're not, not knitting straight across. So I'm gonna go all the way around. Um, and while I'm doing this, I'll just talk a little. Um, when you're doing your first pair of socks, you might wanna use a self-striping sock yarn. That will uh, allow you to um, see better, like on this one. You'll see better where your rows are cause you got a color there. So yeah. So I'm just gonna keep doing this. Maybe I won't finish it just to save time. And then once I have that done, all the way around, say pretend this is all the way around, then I'll grab another needle, I'll just get the other end of this one for, for demonstration purposes. And then I would skip a row, and then on the next row, go down and get every other one again. And you know what? It doesn't matter if you turn it this way or spin it around. It, you know, you can do it either way. 
just, you know, so you do the whole row the same direction. Because a lot of times I do the bottom one like this, and then I spin it around and do the top one from the other side. So you would just do this all the way around. And uh, once you've gotten all the way around both sides, then what you're going to do is you're going to pick up uh, one of these stitches from in between, and you're going to snip it and unpick it. Now, I'm not going to actually do that here because I don't have this all the way around yet, but I'm going to show you the same thing. You, you do the same way to cut in a heel, okay? So that's what you do here. Um, then you would have two small tubes. So now here I have a small tube. This one's cut, ready to go. Actually, I've already got the other half here with the cuff sewn on, knit on, excuse me, and the toe knit on. So what I do is I usually do the cuff first. You pick up all the stitches. If you have already have them on a needle, you're ready to go. Just start knitting. You knit your first round plain, just plain knit, because you don't want those little uh, weird bumps of a separate color here. So after you knit the first one around, then you start in your purl two, knit two ribbing, and you work that as long as you want. For me, it's 14 rows. Don't ask me why, but it's 14 rows for me. I like 14 rows. I guess it kind of gives me balance. I don't know, it's a little shorter than the toe, but for some reason, I just like it. It's all your own preference. Some people go up to as far as 20. Then when you have that done, bind off in a stretchy bind off. I use Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. If you want to use a, a different stretchy bind off, go for it. And then I come at the toe end, I'm like this again. I make sure I like travel up uh, something here and make sure, like I'll even use a tapestry needle or something and make sure I'm staying in the same column all the way down to here. And then when I'm sure I'm in the same column, then I, uh, go around and knit four rows plain. And then I start my decrease. You don't have to do the four rows plain. If you don't want that little straight part right there, you can just jump right into your decreases. That's up to you. But I like to do knit one, SSK, knit until the last two, knit two together, knit one. I turn it over, do the same thing. I do that every other row until I have 20 stitches on each needle on each side, and then after that, then I do it every row. And that kind of gives you a little bit of a rounded toe. It's not so straight up like that. It's more rounded. Uh, I like the way it fits. So then when you have, have it changed from this to this, then you need to cut in your heel. Okay, I'm gonna cut in my heel on this side. My foot, like I said before, is nine and a half. So you subtract two inches from that and go up from your toe. So that would be seven and a half for me. Um, let me grab my needle again. So I will put that there. Seven and a half looks like it's the second red row here so I'm gonna put my needle there but again I am gonna make sure that I'm coming up from this same place here so that's this column right there it is right I probably flattened it so many times it has to be right so here we are seven and a half inches so we're going to pick up just the right leg of every stitch all the way across. Now when you're on the heel, you're only doing this on one side, of course. When you're on the, when you're splitting the tube, you're doing it all the way around. On the heel, you're doing it on one side. It doesn't really take that long. 
It's a little fiddly. Oop. Takes longer when you drop what you've already done. This yarn I'm using here is an opal. I like opal yarn for socks. It's not quite as soft as all the other ones, but it seems to wear really well. I have some that I am on my third year, and I wash them and dry them in the washer and dryer with my regular clothes. And I know you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to be a little gentle with them and lay them flat to dry, but you know, if I did that, I probably wouldn't wear homemade socks. And the opal, like I said, it, it looks like brand new yet. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 32. Okay, so I've got exactly half the stitches on there. That's good. I'm gonna pull that through. The cord's a little skinnier, so that'll give us a little more room to work. And then we'll take the other half of the needle and do the same exact thing. Go all the way across. Yeah, I, I believe, um, I know some people say different, but I believe that your yarn should have at least 15% nylon to be strong for socks. I've heard people say it doesn't need to be. You can use 100% uh, wool if you're not hard on your socks. Well, I guess I'm hard on my socks because I tried some of my earlier socks, just 100% uh, merino superwash, and I popped my uh, toe, my big toe, right through it. And I mean, I don't let my big toenails grow excessively long. I mean, they do grow, and and I'm guessing it's toenail rubbing on there that caused that. But um, at the same time, the other socks that I wore as much, if not more, that were opal yarn are just fine. So I believe you need at least 15%, and I prefer the 7525 blend for socks. Okay, so now we have both of them there. So now we need to cut. You can see it. You can see it's, every, it's like it's every other one because you're just picking up the right leg. And I am, oh, I only have an icky scissors here. I hope they'll work okay. I'm just gonna go reach in and pull up one of the middle stitches in that middle row that's between these two rows. I'm gonna pull up a stitch. with these icky scissors <laughs> try to cut it old school scissors <laughs> okay I guess you can make anything work if you try hard okay now I'll unpick these and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna leave the last two stitches on uh, not unpicked not picked out I want to leave that so in the corner of my heel, I will not get a hole. I have a lot of socks with a little hole there. Some heels is just unavoidable. But the afterthought heel, you can make a beautiful heel with no hole if you just leave two stitches unpicked. And then you weave the end in with those two stitches still in there, they'll kind of be inside. They'll be behind your heel, actually. But when they're, when it's all made, you don't notice it. Let's, let's look here. You'll see here, no hole. No hole. Let's even look on the inside. You can see they're kind of there on the inside, those two stitches. 
You can see your other ones are kind of under it and they're right there. That's preventing the hole. I'm almost there. I sure hope this video is turning out because I'm doing a lot of talking and I haven't checked on it since the beginning. So I want to leave that stitch and that stitch. So I'll take that one out yet. See, and you can see I turned it over and it still looks like it's the right leg. So when you, when you cut it like right in smack in the middle, you have lots of yarn to weave the ends in. I weave them in like six to eight stitches. And then I cut it off with like a um, quarter inch to half inch heel. I mean, quarter, excuse me, quarter inch to half inch tail. And that just, you know, will keep it so it stays on the inside and it'll wear up against the sock and you won't even notice it. You saw that on the other one, that little tail there. That's by design. If you don't like that little tail after you wash them the first time, go back and if it's still loose, you can cut it off then. Because after you wash it, it's pretty much in place. So here we had one, two stitches. This one will come out yet. So there we go. We've unpicked everything except for the last two stitches so we don't get a hole. So then from here, you would just attach your contrasting yarn and start knitting. Um, and that's all there is to it. And when you knit a heel, your heel is exactly like a toe looks like this when it's flat, but if you pull it out like this, it's exactly the same. Okay, and I do the four rows of plain stocking at first and then continue on and make the same exact toe I made here, just what I said earlier. There is all these instructions that I just told you um, on the website in the patterns, there's gonna be a pattern that's just called um, Sock Tube Socks, I believe is the name of it. You'll see it at um, magpiescottage.com under patterns, Sock Tube Socks. We're selling the sock tubes themselves. You can get 100 grams all pre-cranked on the circular sock machine, 64 stitches. Um, that gives you anywhere from 40 to 48 inches of a sock tube. You can make that into two pair of socks, approximately this height. Or if you want longer ones, you get one pair and you'd have a little left over. If you want them so that they're all matching, you would have to unroll a small bit into a ball and then, make, and then cut your two uh, tubes that you want for socks, put needles on the ends, or waste yarn, like on the end of here. Just run waste yarn through. Um, you'd cut them and then knit your cuffs, then toes, then heels. If you have any questions, let me know. I hope this helps you uh, know how to make your socks into, I mean, your tubes into socks. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.